On this week's episode, we're in Franklin, Tennessee. This little suburb is just 20 minutes south of Nashville. And today, it's where we're seeing what's sweet and grilling up some good eats. Honeybees, they're the backbone of our agriculture here in the South. In fact, their existence alone is responsible for over one third of our crops. Luckily, Jay Williams of Williams Honey Farm right here in Franklin, Tennessee, is doing something to make a difference. We're here to see just how he and his furry friends get down. Let's see what happens. Jay Williams, man? nice to meet nice you, sir. Nice to meet you too, welcome beautiful. to Franklin. Thank welcome you. to the land of the bees. Thank you, man, this couldn't be a more beautiful land. We have a lot of space here, a lot of bees, and we have beautiful, we have a lot of sun. weather. That's mm-hmm. a lot of sun. We're lucky. That's right. Jay, there's a lot of moving parts that go on in these beehives, but as well as your business. What are we gonna get to see here at this yard today? Man, we'll get to see about as much as you want. That's so cool. we have tons of bees, we'll get inside some hives. We'll maybe, if we're lucky, find some honeycomb, okay. uh, taste some honey. Uh, I wanna show you a queen, what oh, a queen yeah. looks like. Uh, maybe some baby bees hatching out if we're lucky. Cool. And uh, who, who knows what else we'll find, but I'll teach you as much as I possibly can in Sounds a short good. period of time you have. Sounds good. We're with the Bee Messiah here. That's what's really going to be your <laughs> name today. Okay, mm. let's get rocking and rolling, man. All right, man, I'm excited. Let's do this. Cool. Get you in a suit. I right, need a suit. Come on. Our journey starts with a tour of Jay's multiple bee colonies. He starts by explaining the art of beekeeping, how you must move quietly, making sure each movement has a purpose to avoid getting stung. Everything is very purposeful. I have to plan, what am I gonna do? I have to um, take care of my bees and nurture them. I really can't throw things around and be too jarring. Um, My bees are part of my family. You know, I have two and a half million daughters in this yard. (laughs) Um, 80% of a hive is female, so Uh, The females really get the job done. They're the workforce of these hives. Don't they always? Next, Jay explains to us the structure of a hive, where each super is made up of cells, which is where the bees build their honeycomb and begin the honey-making process. Like is it the higher you stack, is it the more honey you can harvest, or does it not work that way? Yeah, so um, this this spring, let's let's call it, um, in June or so, July 5th is when I harvested, but in June, Mm -hmm. this hive was about 10 or 11 boxes tall. And after a little hive anatomy, Jay takes us to see royalty as we have a look at his lovely queens. So queens, they're they're lead by example, am I right? Sort of, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's kind of fun because, so I raise a lot of my own queens. Literally, I raise a queen from a tiny little egg. Mm -hmm. Uh, This is about the size of the tip of a pencil. Wow. Um, And then it sounds corny, but you get to know all your queens and what they look like. This queen, um, she's Italian. (laughs) And this queen, Guess what she's like? Uh, I would say she's very graceful. She's a lover. <laughs> Come on in, hang out, chill yeah. out, have a meatball, let's talk. She's very, very cool. Um, down the line or so, we have Russian bees, oh. Russian queens. And they're ready to fight you. And they are ready to fight you. Ha <laughs> ha, pow. All right, ready so we're opening this up. guy up. Once the top of the hive is open, uh, he smokes the bees with a combination of wood to lower their activity level. See what happens right there. They all sort of get out of the way. Wow. So we're starting with really basic stuff. So like right here, if you look right there, you see that? Mm-hmm. That's honey or nectar that they just put away. So it's not cured yet. Again, we're at the top. This is sort of like the, the newest creation. When you get yeah. lower and lower, that's when you get a little bit more. Um, more you want to let them know, hey, I'm not here to hurt you. Mm-hmm. I'm here to take care of you. Um, and they can tell that, they can really sense it. These bees, the longer I work with them, they get to know what you look like. They know your um, your attitude and your gestures, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. This tiny little insect will teach you something new every single time you come to a bee yard. I love that. You know, they all hatch out of their 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 um, their cocoon there, and then literally they become a nurse bee, and then they become you know an undertaker where they get rid of all the garbage in the hive and they shove mm-hmm. it out the front door. Then they're like a, a guard bee at the front door, and eventually you graduate to become um, a forager. So you're going out and grabbing that pollen, grabbing that nectar, and then bringing it back. The important lesson here is that every bee in this colony has a purpose and a role. And it's so important to, to realize that because I feel like 
you and I can apply it to our job, our family, our business, everything. It's Most like, definitely. We all work really hard. No, there's no free ride. Mm -hmm. You earn your keep and you try and do the best you can for the greater good of whatever it is you're working on. Amen. So, and Amen. I learned that from a tiny little bug. I got it. Up next, Jay shows off some of his amenities like a uh, portable teaching trailer. Mm -hmm. And later, we make my deliciously cheesy honey kissed pizza. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. What I do as a beekeeper is I'll give them a starter. I'll say, all right, see this little beginning comb right here? Mm -hmm. I want you to start building comb off of that. Hmm. So you can tell, you know, this is what they start out with. They start building it up, building it up. And then this is honeycomb. The important is that these bees will not cap it. They put a little like wax capping on top of the cell that used to look like this. Mm -hmm. They only do that when they know the honey has been dehydrated to about 18% or, or so moisture. Oh. Yeah. So this coating that we're seeing on the top, is this bees wax? Mm -hmm. Yep. So this is what they put in lip balms and lotions exactly. and some creams and stuff like that. My hive door right here, and I have like an old knife that I'll just cut the tops of that and I expose it and then I put it in like a centrifuge and I whip it around and that whips the honey to the outside and then drains to the bottom. Well, this little cappings right there, I'll collect and save and then I will turn it into candles or lip balms or saps, whatever it is. This is made from like uh, the sap of trees hmm. and propolis is antibacterial and antimicrobial. So remember I said that the beehive has a weak immune system? Right. It will line the hive with all this propolis to help them as an external immune system. Crazy, huh? These are extremely hygienic. So look what happened. Remember a second ago, I went and I popped the top off of there? Mm -hmm. What are the bees doing? They are cleaning up the mess that Mr. J just made. They don't want a single drop to go to waste. Understood. You know? And because Jay always has his hives on his mind, he created a full-scale human head habitat. Yeah, just for his bees. It's not all about the honey with Jay. He prides himself in beekeeping education as well. So much so that he had a custom teaching trailer made just so he can take his teachings mobile. Primarily, uh, we're taking a lot of festivals, mm -hmm. uh, Girl Scout meetings, uh, unit schools, yeah, you name it. Okay. And I just tow it with my truck and it has two beehives usually in the, in the back here. Wow. And there's a compartment that's completely screened in. Uh -huh. And I'll open the beehive with crowds of kids right up, right <laughs> up against that beehive. Well, guess what? No one's getting stung. And that's they can right. hear the bees. They can see what it's all about. Those frames that you got to hold with mm -hmm. your bare hands. Um, and the kids just shove their hands in here and they'll hold it. And then hold it right up to the screen. That's smell awesome. it, sniff it, and see those bees right in front of them. And they won't get stung. And they have no fear at all. Not, not at all. Because the bees all. are all uh, enclosed there. That is a very nifty tool. Is this common at all? Or is this this is one of a kind. I made it all myself. Finally, Jay and I get down to business. We start by rolling out our dough and simmering a flower. Then brushing it with some extra virgin olive oil. After the first side grills, we then start topping the pizza with tomato sauce, mozzarella, salami, and some fresh basil. Finally, we garnish with some Pecorino Romano cheese, some freshly harvested bee pollen, and of course that oh so sweet honey. Thanks for watching, y'all. I hope you learned something today and maybe even got inspired to help save some honeybees. If you love this episode and would like to find out more ways to get involved, check out some of the links in the description. 